I'm serious, guys. I did it. I ditched my Mac Pro for an M1 MacBook Air. No cap, I legit did that. But there is a reason behind it. It wasn't just a random spur of the moment thing. If you guys read Apple Insider with any regularity, you may remember about a year or so ago, I started experiencing some issues with my brand new $6,000 Mac Pro. And it was inexcusable to have any issues on a machine at that level. So it went into the Apple store again to get it looked at and serviced. And it's been there for several weeks now, for probably about a month. And while it's been in the shop, I needed something to create content for you fine people. Uh, I needed a, a daily machine to use. And I was going to use my iPad Pro as I had done in the past, but I really wanted to try something new this time. So I have uh, an M1 MacBook Pro or an M1 MacBook Air here in the studio that I've used for compares and other content stuff, uh, but no real, you know, no daily use on this thing. It was really just there for comparisons and other content that we created. But I needed something to do this, you know, editing, writing, everything like that. So I thought it'd be fun to try going from Apple's most expensive computer, a $6,000 Mac Pro, to Apple's lowest cost, uh, you know, full-fledged Mac, I guess, the MacBook Air. Technically a Mac Mini is lower, but this has the same processor inside. So it's effectively the same thing. If you want, you can call it a Mac Mini and we'll pretend it just doesn't have a screen or something. But effectively we're looking at an M1 Mac versus Apple's Mac Pro. And honestly, the differences are insane. This has been eye-opening, it has been frustrating, it has been freeing, it has been a lot of stuff. And let's talk a little bit about those differences and what I learned by ditching my Mac Pro for a $1,200 MacBook Air. So first, let's get the machines clear and correct. What am I using now and what was I using before? So right now, I'm using Apple's M1 MacBook Air. So this is their newest MacBook Air with their M1 processor on the inside, and I'm using it with the eight core GPU, uh, but the lower amount of storage. Then I was using Apple's $5,999 Mac Pro, the $6,000 Mac Pro, which is the base Mac Pro with the 580X Radeon graphics, and I believe it has uh, the eight core 3.5 uh, gigahertz Xeon W processor in there. So basically going from the Xeon workstation class processor to Apple's M1 and going from that 580X Radeon to Apple's M1 integrated GPU. So those are what we're kind of comparing between. But again, $6,000, $1,200. Huge discrepancy between these two machines. I fully anticipated, based on the last time that I used a MacBook Air for daily use, which was probably back in 2011, the last time that I actually had a MacBook Air and was using it for my daily driver, I really wasn't expecting a lot here. Like, I had done a lot of M1 testing, but I had never like kind of literally moved my entire workflow from a Mac Pro to a MacBook Air before, and I really fully anticipated a lot of hiccups and roadblocks along the way, a lot more waiting around for stuff. Uh, I did not think it was going to go very smoothly. But holy crap, was I surprised! The M1 silicon in there is bonkers. So I'm using Final Cut Pro, of course, to do all my video production, and Apple has optimized Final Cut for Apple silicon, like as best that it can. So comparing video processing times, I don't have these side by side at the moment. Like I don't have my Mac Pro and the M1 MacBook Air, but this is faster. This is faster in editing, processing videos than it is on my Mac Pro. To me, that is mind blowing that that one task, my main task that I do is that much faster on an M1 processor than it is on my $6,000 workstation. It's so insane to me that that is a possibility. I mean, Apple's eight core GPU compared to the 580X Radeon, the Radeon processor graphics should be better. They should be you know, theoretically faster than what Apple is offering, but because Apple has optimized Final Cut Pro so much for its own silicon, and it's able to tap into metal and everything else so much closer with the Apple silicon on the inside, it makes it faster at editing and exporting those videos than it is on the Mac Pro. So if you are a video production person, that should already just send you 
you know, into fits of rage or something, that this Mac Pro is being outpaced by a MacBook Air. It also was kind of freeing to me because I had gone from a workstation where pretty much all my video editing had to be done at my desk, standing desk. I didn't get to do, I didn't, you know, venture around that much while editing video. I did, but I would do it on my iPad Pro, which was, it's still nice. LumaFusion is great, uh, but I didn't rely on that super frequently. Now that I was using this exclusively, I'm finding myself sitting here at this desk, standing at my standing desk, sitting on the couch, and heck, on the one day where it was like 60 degrees outside, I was outside editing video. It was really nice to be able to do that for everything, not just the couple times that I would move to my iPad, but every single time I could just kind of relax where I was to edit with. So it was kind of neat. I'm not saying I'm gonna give up a workstation for a laptop for that you know, convenience, but it was kind of a cool, option that I had that I had forgotten was so nice being tied to a desktop so often. Another thing that I liked about the M1 MacBook Air is it has a Wi-Fi 6. And I hadn't relied on Wi-Fi that often because my Mac Pro does have that wired connection all the time. So I would just boom, plug it in, and I would just run wired. But using this guy, I was on Wi-Fi all the time, and I had not really used too many Wi-Fi 6 devices. I have my phone, but I don't do a lot of downloading on my phone, so this is the first kind of main machine I had to use Wi-Fi 6 in the house, and we're using the Eero Pros with Wi-Fi 6 and everything, and holy crap, is Wi-Fi 6 faster in here? We have, you know, gigabit, like thousand down uh, internet, and downloads are just blazing fast on this machine. And using the Mac Pro, the times I did use it on Wi-Fi, it was not nearly uh, as good as this is. And of course, that's still using Wi-Fi 5, 802.11ac. AC is still good, but wired connection was definitely better. Here, I didn't even miss that wired connectivity. As far as how my workflow changed, not a lot did. I was really able to move everything over, sign into iCloud, everything kind of populated. I moved over my main folders of all my Final Cut transitions and filters and everything like that that I use on a regular basis, moved that over to the new machine, and that was good. Uh, and then everything runs through a Thunderbolt 3 dock, so I was, you know, pretty quickly just plugging into the Thunderbolt 3 ports or the Thunderbolt 4 ports uh, there on the side, and I had access to all my peripherals that I would use before, all my storage and everything like that. But again, going into that productivity thing, I started picking up like a G Drive USB-C RAID system, plugging that in and doing a lot of my editing on the go off that external drive. Now that was starting to get into the annoyances here, I have such a small drive on here. I think it's like 256 or 512 or something, and I burned through that in no time at all. And relying on even portable drives, portable SSDs to be fast, is a struggle. I was riding the struggle bus all the time, bumping up into storage capacity limits on everything that I was connecting to. I ran through like three portable drives really fast and had to keep offloading, coming back to the desk and offloading back onto my larger, uh, larger storage that I had on the Mac Pro. So I did notice that very fast is while the internal storage here is nice, I ran into that super quickly and any of my external drives filled up very, very fast. I kind of forget about the, you know, on a Mac Pro, I've got 20 terabytes or something of storage that I've equipped it with internally and you rely on that. And when you go to something like this, you constantly have to start worrying about the external media and editing on the go is nice, but you eat through, you know, gigs and gigs and gigs and even terabytes of storage processing 4K video at even 60 frames per second. Now don't think that I'm gonna give up a Mac Pro for my MacBook Air. The Mac Pro has some huge advantages and while performance here is better than my Mac Pro, that is not the case for everyone or all the configurations of the Mac Pro. The bottom end of the Mac Pro, you're not necessarily paying as much for performance, you're paying for kind of the system itself, its expandability, its IO and everything like that, and what it can be over time. It's kind of got a longer lifespan to it. And when you're looking at something like a MacBook Air, this is what it's gonna be. It's never gonna get any better than this. You can't upgrade the store, can't upgrade the RAM, can't upgrade you know, processors, nothing. So this is what you have. Uh, and it's never gonna change. My Mac Pro, we keep adding stuff to it. I've added, you know, a ton more RAM to it that pays off for having a ton of browser tabs open and multitasking in a bunch of things open in Affinity Photo while also editing in Final Cut and thousand tabs open. Like, it, it really pays off in those regards. So, 
the bottom Mac Pro, you're paying more for kind of the system itself rather than the performance. But once you start stepping up, there's so many more things that it can do. There's the Vega 2, Vega Pro 2 uh, GPUs there that are gonna outpace this thing um, more than likely. You have the Afterburner card that you can outfit the Mac Pro with that again is going to significantly outpace the M1 MacBook Air. So for high-end video production, don't buy a MacBook Air. Buy your Mac Pro and outfit it with the proper cards and accessories to go along with it. When you have that kind of setup, your Mac Pro is going to be a, a beast of a machine. And I really appreciate how much I've been able to expand and use it with storage, cards, uh, and everything else since I've gotten it only you know a year or so ago. So yeah, I ditched my Mac Pro for an M1 MacBook Air. My biggest takeaway is one, I sometimes miss the portability of a laptop. And two, Apple Silicon has incredible, incredible potential. We've said this before, I've talked about it many times, and it's truly amazing to see when it's such a drastic shift from a Mac Pro to a MacBook Air, how crazy this thing truly is, especially in the world of creatives and video production. So I'm going back to my Mac Pro, for sure. The repairs actually are just done, and I'll be picking it up in the next day or two, and I'm gonna be very happy with it. It's still an incredibly capable machine, and the amount of expandability and future proofing that I can do there is gonna keep me happy for a long time. But I know when a Apple Silicon Mac Pro pops onto the scene, I'm gonna have a really hard time not trying to make the jump. Let me know what you guys think over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU, and otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video.